So, Dr. Stone has gotten a spin-off series. I'm not too surprised. I'm seeing this more and more. My Hero Academia. I got My Hero Academia Vigilantes. A few other ones, but... Yeah, so Dr. Stone Reboot Byakuya focuses on uh, Psenku's father after, you know, the whole <laughs> everybody's been turned to stone thing. And honestly, it feels really well-timed because, well, essentially the uh, contents of this chapter were almost exactly what happened in the uh, anime last this last week. So, yay. Uh, good timing there. Very well done. Also... Weird notes. Uh, the artist of regular Dr. Stone is Boichi, and the story is written by Richiro Inagaki. But for the reboot, it's written and drawn by Boichi. So the artist of the original series is writing this series and drawing it, which is really weird. I, I guess that kind of makes sense. You know, they've been working on uh, Dr. Stone for, what, two and a half years now? So they have a... Even the artist would have enough understanding where he could go off and make his own series without you know, having to check in with the original uh, story artist, the uh, original writer for every little thing. But that just feels really weird to me. I mean, I guess... <laughs> trying to figure out how the situation goes. You know, they're like, all right, well, uh, just... I have faith in you. Just don't do anything too crazy and keep the uh, story I've been written going. He's like, okay. Two minutes later. By the way, I added a robot. A talking robot that's going to help them out in all their adventures. I hope you don't mind. So many questions about that. But, uh, yeah. So it starts off with uh, Byakuya and Senku. And... Oh, God. Even as a 10-year-old, Senku is just... Well, he's honestly kind of a dick. I mean... Poof, talking to me like a dumb kid who hasn't already tackled quantum mechanics. He's 10! What 10-year-old handles quantum mechanics? Just such an attitude right there. It's honestly hilarious. Anyway, uh, we get to his office where he's working, and he's managed to create a robot. No, not that one. That's the original model that he uh, was working off of, Ray-01. And the uh, actual working one is Ray 23. He also didn't actually make it. He was just supervising it. And he's got to love Senku again. Oh, so the supervisor of this project was a rank amateur. I just... Oh, God. Senku was such a cocky little ass. Even more so as a kid than he is now. I mean, people complain that Senku's er too arrogant to, you know, all this and that. But he was worse. He's actually improved since he was a kid. That's insane. Anyway, then we move on to the one day prior to petrification, where they're all meeting each other. Again, this is literally what just happened in the anime. It's weird. Uh, there's Byakuya, Senku's father, a mission specialist. Lillian Weinberg, a space tourist and world-famous singer who uh, Connie is absolutely in love with. Uh, Shamil Voklov, weird uh, guy's... He's basically uh, Kenro. That's the best way I can describe him. He's, he's literally Kenro. I mean, he's Kenro's ancestor, does that make sense? But yeah, he's Kenro. The commander, Yakov Nikton, Russian man, and his wife, Daria, and they're both doctors. And then, of course, there's the uh, mission specialist, Connie Lee. Anyway, then the petrification uh, beam strikes, and just Jesus Christ. The scale of this thing is really terrifying. I mean, in the last chapter of the main series, we saw a mini one that covered an island. Uh, and I thought that was huge. This one is... T I said in the reaction video, this is freaking continental. It actually looks like it's causing a tidal wave or something just from its <laughs> absolute force of it being released like that. Seriously, just the amount of power. I mean, regardless of whatever this thing did, the amount of power it would take to create an effect that covers the planet is just ridiculous. That's more than a nuclear reactor. It's more than literally any other form of technology I can think of. It's freaking huge. All right. So, yeah, anyway, then they're all freaked out because they're the last uh, six people left on Earth. And they decide they got to go back home. They got to go back to Earth. 
And of course, the uh, cowardly Yakov is against this, basically saying that, you know, we're the last six people left on the planet. If we die, you know, humanity is done for. I mean, we can't even, you know, land on ground without ground support helping us out. And just, gotta love Byakia. We, we can't fail because each of us is carrying the fate of 1.3 billion people on our shoulders. Just, what the fr- How are you Senku's father? That's like the most emotional speech I've ever heard in my entire life. That, that is no scientific logic or reasoning behind that whatsoever. Yeah, I know he's not technically Senku's father, but adopted, whatever. But still, that's just weird. This man raised Senku. I have absolutely no idea how they didn't murder each other at some point. This line is, is pretty cool. Moving forward, even in the face of danger, is what defines humanity. It's why astronauts like us exist. You just gotta love his attitude right there. It just... So perfect. I mean, like I said, he's a real emotional leader, like inspirational speeches and whatnot. It's definitely not a Senku's forte, but... Pretty good. And, and then he goes on. The one most in need of our help is the person who's gonna break out of the stone someday. I mean, the amount of faith this man has in Senku is honestly terrifying. He, his logic essentially, we need to go back to Earth so that one day uh, we'll have resources set up so that Senku can save everybody. I mean, he literally says, Senku, by the time you wake him from this, I'll have created a new wave of humanity to help you. This man literally restarted humanity all to help his son. I mean, yes, the whole, let's uh, save humanity, all the petrified people things, but no, that that was all secondary to him. His literal only thought is, I'm going to restart humanity to save my freaking son. I just absolutely love it. Number one dad, definitely. And anyway, then, just like in the anime, Byakuya starts uh, getting ready for his return trip to Earth, and uh, Shamil punches him in the stomach and says, uh, this is a suicide mission, I have a son, so I should do it, and she gotta love it. <laughs> Even in the manga, they decided to include that little look Connie gives him. As she's like, wow, this is a really nice guy. <laughs> just, just love that little detail. Though, I honestly thought we were actually going like a totally different route here. Because he's like, I'm not going to Japan. I'm going to Kazakhstan. Like, wait, are, is this a whole other story? Is this like, what if they didn't go to Japan? His basic reasoning, it's still pretty far from the petrification uh Beam only like 3,000 miles away. They have super advanced technology facilities there that can be really helpful. And it's less of an issue to recoordinate the, uh, to recalculate the landing coordinates so they don't move too much. And honestly, I think this is what they should have done. I mean, I know then we wouldn't get the whole series with Senku and whatnot, but Senku figured out how to unpetrify people by examining bats in a cave. That's it. If they had, you know, access to super advanced technology, you know, all around the world, I feel like they would have had a much better chance of undoing the petrification and, you know, saving everyone. And you might argue that whoever did this is somehow still watching them and would have seen them start rebuilding society and then just says, all right, I'm doing it again. This time there's no one in space, so I'll, I'll be fine. But if that's not the case, they would have literally saved humanity right there just by going to Kazakhstan instead of Japan. Again, I think that's the better route. I mean, the basic reason for not doing Kazakhstan is a uh, ground landing is super dangerous and would more than likely kill them. Uh, Sen uh, Japan's got a huge infrastructure that's going to give you all the things they need, though they apparently never go back to it, which literally makes no sense. I mean, they were stuck in the island like, this is good, we'll just stay here. I'm like, why not go, you know, to the cities? I guess far away, but... They have medicine. You wouldn't have died of pneumonia. You would have lived better lives. But, you know what, that's... Whatever. They, they they didn't, and that's just where the story is. Maybe they'll further explain that in the series that they couldn't make it or whatnot, but we'll see what happens with that. And their final argument is literally that uh, Senku is so amazing that he's going to solve all their problems, which just absolutely freaking insane. They, they literally say Senku is the greatest tech resource we could ever have. And Shamil is like, you can't be serious. That is literally the stupidest thing I've heard in my entire life. Which, yes, it is. <laughs> Though uh, Byakuya justifies it a little bit more, saying that when he was seven, he counted out every second for two whole months, which is 
Good practice for being turned to stone for 3,000 years. I gotta say, uh, good on you, Senku. Good on you. And that's apparently enough to convince everyone, like, all right, we should go rescue Senku. That's our top priority above everything else. And so the crew of six sides, they're going to make off for the war of Japan. But they are, in fact, a crew of seven because they, like I said earlier, they have a talking robot. AI pet thing. Yeah. Okay. Actually, kind of reminds me of something I've seen in uh, a lot of the Gundam series. There was a talking robot pet a lot of them have. Also interesting to note that it's Ray 37 when the original one was, well, Ray 1, then Ray 23, and now this one. So, yeah, it's a little weird, you know. I'm going to say this is non-canon because, you know, we never saw the robot in the manga or the anime before, but but maybe it's just a rewrite. You know, they're saying this is now what's the official, this is now the official canon. And you just got to love this robot. He's so freaking cute. And... Lillian loves him, hugs him, and he goes, your assessment is appreciated. So cute. So yeah, they decide their uh, Humanities Final Six plus one robot begins their mission to reach Japan. And next chapter comes out November 1st. So, yeah. This was definitely interesting. It's essentially a reboot that shows, you know, how they survived on the island. It's essentially uh, Dr. Stone, but with the... Uh, less scientific knowledge, even though they're freaking astronauts, because obviously Senku is smarter than all of them put together. So much smarter that they all decided that the best uh, course of actions for saving humanity was to go save Senku first. Or at least uh, find a way to... Just absolutely freaking insane, but I'm looking forward to seeing this. I absolutely love Biakke. He's a great guy, and... His, uh, just seeing him in the uh, anime... I, I cried quite a bit during the uh, reaction to the last episode. So, again, I'm excited to see more of him. I think I think it's something people are really going to like. But let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Are you going to read the uh, Dr. Stone reboots? I mean, it's literally called a reboot, so maybe this is just a rewrite, you know? This is now the official new canon. Maybe in the next uh, few chapters of the re real Dr. Stone manga, they're going to find the remnants of the Ray robot, and he's going to be like, I have a message from your father, Senko. Really doubt that. I can't imagine that robot would still be operational in any way whatsoever after 3,000 years, but uh, that'd be interesting. But let me know what you think down below. Are you going to read this? What do you think? Uh, be sure to like, subscribe. Till next time. Peace.